All right then, let's kick start this evening with a brilliant talk by the very distinguished and renowned speaker of tonight, Ravi Purohit. Ravi is a product manager, strategist, educator, and student with 13 years of experience designing products and services across several industries and customer platforms. Ravi loves making technology useful, usable, beautiful, and affordable to the global customer base through products. Ravi started with the, uh, with the energy domain, post his graduation in electrical engineering as a product developer, and later transitioned to product manager role for smart energy meters. Post his master's, he worked for strategy consulting, helping giant healthcare and PE firms with their GTM sales optimization, marketing mix strategies, due diligence, and product launches. For the last four plus years, he has been contributing to enable a global tech conglomerate with 70 plus businesses and 300 million plus customers on identity and payment uh, platforms. A very warm welcome to you, Ravi. We are thrilled to have you here with us tonight, handing the session over to you. Um, thanks, Emma, for the great introduction. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think there's some echo. Yeah. Um, no, I don't hear any echo. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks again for having me. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the today's webinar. Uh, thanks to Shama and the team at uh, Institute of Product Leadership uh, for having me. Um, the cases are low, but the pandemic is not over yet. Hope uh, everyone is safe. Uh, let me share my screen and let's get started uh, with the session. Can you see my screen? We can see your screen, don't we? Cool. Uh, some of you uh, might be intrigued uh, with the title of the session uh, and maybe wondering why is it like that? Uh, how not to build a product? Uh, maybe because uh, we learn more from failures than successes. Uh, maybe because the failures are scrutinized more uh, to learn something and get better for the next hustle. Uh, we'll apply the same principles uh, through some examples and frameworks uh, in the next 50 minutes to learn better. So uh, when a music teacher uh, teaches how to tune their stringed uh, instruments, they instruct, do not tighten the string too much, it might break and do not keep it too loose because it might not be able to make the perfect sound. The balanced path is the way to go. And this is the theme of, of this session. Think from the frameworks and first principles and apply them in the context. Uh, I think Shama has quickly walked through uh, my, my uh, career journey so far. So I'll skip this past. Uh, to summarize, uh, have done the product development and management, and then post my master's, have been uh, uh, into the short stint of strategy consulting, and for the last few years, have been focusing on the product strategy. A quick disclaimer before we proceed. Uh, there is a massive investment of blood, sweat, and tears apart from money to build any product. And uh, failures uh, after such an investment are an extremely disappointing outcome. Uh, there are no silver bullets or magic wands. The outcomes are generally the result of a number of small steps that unite and create a snowball. Uh, therefore, I would encourage you to keep these insights shared as one of the possible reasons for the failure of, for the learning purposes. Uh, so before we proceed, um, Shama, can we have a quick understanding about the participants? Uh, like how many of them are uh, uh, from the product management or the other backgrounds and what is their total industry experience? It will help me uh, navigating through the rest of the materials accordingly. Sure, Ravi, the first poll is launched now. Mm -hmm. So audience, you can have a look at the question on your screen. What best describes your present role? Uh, 
sharing the results now ravi mm -hmm. so most of the folks are from a uh, business analyst or marketing background right 46% of them and uh, yeah. we have 31% from product manager profile followed by engineering and i believe some are still pursuing student got it correct can we move to the next question now sure what is your total industry experience we have extreme mix here one with uh, zero to five years experience 35% and mm -hmm. we also have 15 plus years which is 29% so yeah there you go with the results got it got it that was really helpful cool so now uh, as we know uh, about the, our audience i think we can proceed uh, keeping the the next of the slides in those contexts cool uh, so in today's webinar we will cover five major aspects of product building we'll start with customers then move to competition engineering multi sided markets and prioritization uh, for the better comprehension we will take few examples of failures uh, from personal experiences few stories from the public domain and few frameworks to guide us in the future uh like the good students of product and design let's start with the customer at the front and center uh so again very quick poll what do you think uh, is it a good idea to involve customers in product building yes no or do you think it depends Eighty-three percent wow. of them saying yes. So let's Got go it. with that quote then. Sure, uh, there are uh, never right or wrong answers. So yeah, so so majority of the uh, attendees thinks that uh, it would be a uh, the, we should involve the customers in the product building exercise. Cool. Now let's take an example of uh, of a pitfall of listening to the customers. So this was uh, uh, the one of the first products I worked on. it's a prepayment smart energy meter uh, one can get a 20 digit code from electric company for buying electricity for the day week or month based on the consumption pattern and enter the same through this touch pad and you will get the electricity that was the product it was launched in the european market and the sales team uh, decided to launch the same in the bangladesh market uh, however in, uh, a very interesting thing happened uh, once we launched in the bangladesh market uh back in 2008 9 uh we got a new requirement that the client wants two variants uh, of the energy meter one is uh, for the permanent connections meters uh, uh like for the regular residences and the other one for temporary connections like uh, community halls event locations etc now uh, the team uh, the the product team had to create uh, this uh, these two meters with the initial base configuration changes and also the requirement was to have a, a, of a, the meters with different colors so we we, we we just delivered that and later on uh, we realized that the only change needed for these two variants was the handling of the holidays in the tariff uh and which could have been easily handled uh through the configuration of this 20 digit code so there was actually a no need to create a two separate meters with different colors and all but why did the client ask for that so the client asked for two variants because they were keeping separate inventories because the electricity uh, electricity department was divided into two segments one was taking care of the permanent residences and other one was uh, the temporary connections so that was the reason they asked for two different variants which actually could have been only one so here listen to the customer 
uh, didn't double click on what is the undercurrent need and we produced what might not be the, the most efficient way of working. So that's the pitfall of listening to the customers. But again, hang on before you draw any conclusions. Uh, so basically uh, it was quite like uh, the Henry Ford said about listening to the customers that if I would have asked people, they would have asked for a faster horses. Now, don't draw the conclusions. There's another example, uh, another extreme, not listening to the customers. So Avian is a company known for bottled water. You must have seen that at uh, Virat Kohli, uh, Dhoni's, uh, they drink uh, this water, this particular packaged water. Uh, it was founded in 1789. And in 1978, uh, they were the first brand of natural spring water to be imported into the United States and Canada. In 2005, uh, Avian decided to expand into the clothing market uh, with the uh, water in a line. Now, what does that mean? So they designed uh, the bra to cool the breasts with pads containing mineral water in the warmer months. Uh, there was a filter funnel that women could use to top up the water to their preferred levels. And uh, however, the product was unsuccessful and was discontinued, not after his launch. I'm sure if they would have done the initial uh, market research or some initial POC, they would have realized and they could have saved dollars. So again, two extremes, listening to the customers, not listening to the customers. Now, what to do in such scenarios? So to navigate uh, through the middle path in these circumstances, Always remember, the customer uh, doesn't buy the product. The customer buys what the product does. So customer hires a product to do a job and can fire it any time if it is not up to the mark. So if we think that way, a new perspective develops and uh, that is free from any biases. Uh, for example, uh, the way for an employee logging into Facebook or Twitter after lunch hours uh, for social connection can be considered as an alternative to smoke breaks. So basically, uh, logging into Facebook or Twitter during the lunch timing is equivalent to having a smoke break means Facebook or Twitter are competing for a job as cigarette companies. So that's how if you think that the customer is hiring a product to do a job, we can be saved from these biases, whether to going to two extremes, not listening to customers or getting obsessed with customers and just listening to them without uh, thinking on the other sides. Let's move uh, to competition now. Again, a quick question. Uh, should we keep a close eye and match competition for product features? What do you think? Yes, no, or it depends. It's a quick poll. Okay, so 50% of the participants are saying that uh, we should track competition and almost 40% are saying that it depends. Cool, uh, let's figure out uh, with a few examples. So uh, this is again a pitfall, focusing too much on competition. This is Microsoft uh, Azure. Uh, portable media player launched in 2006. Uh, this was uh, Microsoft's answer to Apple's iPod. Uh, introduced five years after the release of uh, iPod. Uh, though it had feature parity, it came a little too late as the iPod had already uh, rapidly become the go-to source for portable entertainment. So paid attention to the competition, match all the features, but couldn't succeed. Now, another extreme, uh, not paying attention to competition at all. 
So Amazon is ruling the world of e-commerce, no doubt about that. But it's 2014, Fire Phone was not successful. Reason? Uh, it arrived late in the smartphone market and had the limited number of apps compared to the competition like uh, Android and iOS. Hence, people decided not to adopt. So two extremes we have seen. Now, what's wrong? Because uh, in one example, the competition was tracked and the features were matched. In other ones, the competition was not considered, but still the result is similar. So uh, what can guide us to ensure that uh, whether to look at the competition or not? Uh, so Kano model, uh, it was developed in 1980s by uh, Professor uh, Noraiki Kano from Japan. Uh, this is the chart between user needs and satisfaction. So there are few attributes uh, in the product that are must haves. So the presence of them might not give any competitive advantage, but absence of them can create a, can cause a lot of customer dissatisfaction. So for example, if you take an example of phone, then decent sound quality uh, to make calls is a must have. If it is there, then we might not notice it, but if it is not there, then it can cause a huge dissatisfaction. Uh, some of the features are performance. Uh, the more the merrier, uh, again, continuing the same, exa same example of phones, like the battery life. Uh, more uh, the battery life, we will like that, uh, and hence the processing speed of the, or, or, or the processing speed of the smartphone, both are in the performance category. Yet a uh, few features are delighters. What are delighters? Not having those features, uh, might not cause a lot of dissatisfaction because we are not, non, non, not expecting them. But presence can really take the experience up by few notches. Like uh, having a, a waterproof body, even if you have mistakenly dropped the one in the pool for a phone, can be a delighter. And remember, the yesterday's delighters might be today's performance, and today's performance can be tomorrow's must-haves. Uh, like the dual camera, dual SIM, and 5G supports are uh, getting to must-haves these days. So now, comparing the other two examples that we saw in this particular section, uh, comparing them with Kano model, uh, maybe having the uh, having the a lot of apps in in their respective app store could have been a must-have for Amazon Fire Phone to have, uh, and hence they might they they should have tracked the competition over there. And for other features, they could have gone a few notches up using the lighters and performances. Now, uh, no, no more uh, polls this time around. I think you got a hang of it that all the answers would be, it depends. <laughs> so uh, let's move to the third aspect uh, of collaborating with the engineering team. Now, obsession with engineering. So this is uh, Pippin. Uh, it was a, a multimedia center. It played games. It could also play music and the videos and even browse the web. It was more than a console. Uh, it was based on the Macintosh platform and uh, ran a modified uh, Mac OS uh, with ambition for a system close to the current Macintosh at the hardware development stage. The cost was about uh, 600 USD and it was difficult to sell. Engineering Marvel but it failed. So uh, as a myth, uh, I'm sure you must have heard about it that build a metal mouse pad and uh, the world will beat a path to your door. Uh, it's a myth. Uh, sometimes a cat is enough to finish the job and you might not need that mouse trap. Another pitfall, not listening to engineering. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of you must have heard about it. Uh, Steve Sesson uh, invented uh, the self-contained digital camera. It weighed around uh, eight pounds and had uh, uh, 0 0.01 megapixels. Kodak didn't uh, act upon it. And on the filmless idea, as it would, it would, it would have uh, been the self-cannibalizing for them, uh, considering Kodak was the market leader at that point of time. So again, uh, two extremes. Um, 
obsession with the engineering on the product development stage. And second thing, not listening to the engineering and the new ideas. What could be the framework here? Uh, problem space versus solution space. Uh, start from the problem space. Uh, once the team is aligned on the problem space, then move to the solution space. The articulation of the challenge would be different in both the spaces. So when you are in the problem space, think about the problem and it should be like a, as a customer, I want to do this so ca I can achieve this. While the solution space would start that as a customer, I will use this product to do this so I can achieve that. You can see the uh, small, a very, very minute wordplay here. Here you are thinking about the product already. So start with the customer, uh, start with the problem space and then move to the solution space. Uh, for example, the old story of uh, uh, the tool to write uh, uh, in space where NASA's vendor invested close to $1 million to build the pen for space and Russian uh, mocked the same with the pencil. So you can think that uh, if we hypothesize uh, uh, the user story for uh, which was the outcome of creating this $1 million pen would have been as an astronaut, I will use this, I, I want to use this pen to write in this space where Russian space pen, which was a pencil, uh, the user story could have been that as an astronaut, I want to write. And hence the, the solution was not there. Hence the engineering would have come after uh, designing the user story, which is focused on the problem space. Uh, so we have covered so far um, customers, competition and engineering collaboration. Let's move. Uh, to a very particular product category of multi-sided markets. Uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Uber, all are examples of multi-sided markets. Uh, there's a one side, which is the end customer. On the, on the other side, there are providers like uh, advertisers, merchants, drivers, etc. Which side to focus on? Uh, on the end customer side, or on the provider side. So when you are uh, designing your product. Again, uh, this comes from a personal experience. Uh, this is the one where I was involved about uh, five years back. Uh, so we were building a platform for the SME lending, small and medium enterprises. So on the one side, there were banks and NBFCs, uh, which needed uh, qualified leads and on the other side, we had uh, small and uh, medium uh, enterprises who were not getting the loans from traditional instruments. Uh, we did a POC with our product. We had uh, four banks and NBFCs uh, integrated with our platform, uh, but it didn't uh, go as expected. The reason, uh, we built a very convenient app for SMEs to upload the documents needed uh, it was very easy to use as we thought while, while designing that app. On one side, once the documents are uploaded, the banks can go with their uh, credit scoring and it was very fluent. We checked it thoroughly with the banks and uh, NBFCs, but we missed one part. That most of our potential customers, uh, the small and medium enterprises, they, they don't speak a single language. The app had to be a uh, vernacular in, in the local language or the regional languages. We missed that part. It was all in English. And uh, secondly, uh, they were not having all the details which were NPFCs and uh, banks were asking to decide whether they are credit worthy or not. So we missed these two. We didn't simplify that part and we launched a POC, uh, which was brilliant on, for the banks and NBFC side, but we couldn't uh, get the end customers on our platform. So we focus our energies on the one side of the market and not the other side, and hence it was a failure. Now, uh, the other part, uh, the Google is the gold standard when it comes to uh, acing the multi-sided markets with the history of uh, successful platforms used by billions. 
uh, but google earth started uh, uh, google health started in 2006 as an attempt to create a repository of health records uh, to connect customers with doctors pharmacies and insurance companies directly but it couldn't scale as planned and it was discontinued uh, i think in 2012 uh, here the reason uh, the google was not able to get the provider relationships on board from the end customer perspective uh, the product was great but there were not enough providers for the end customers to be interested on this platform so again um, two extremes one where it was focused too much on providers other one it was focused too much on end customers now what could be the framework here uh, the framework could be the balancing both sides with adoption and retention uh one way would be to focus on uh, uh, optimal adoption from the providers initially uh, which can drive the critical mass of the customers like uh, having two or three banks and nbfcs in the sme lending case and on the customer side aim for the retention now retention means to ensure that those who use uh, the product or service once they are coming back periodically that will give the confidence on the product fit and once there is a, a sufficient track uh, we can start working on the scaling of the product or solution so on the provider sides on the adoption part on the customer side retention first then adoption cool uh, so that comes to the end of the fourth uh, of the multi sided market let's move to the fifth one which is feature prioritization uh i don't have any a particular failure story uh, uh, as have been the theme uh, of the session so far but i'm sure uh, we all have been in in the meetings where we struggled to get the alignment on what to pick and when so uh, there are two frameworks which can help in prioritization the first one is the return on investment on the x axis uh, we have efforts low medium high and uh, on the y axis we have the impact uh, so once we pin the features in this uh, in this 3 by 3 uh, we can confidently say that we should go for the high impact and uh, low effort features so right at the uh, top left side this one also uh, great tool uh, it will it will help uh, us get the best roi from our development uh, teams or engineering efforts uh, and we can we can avoid the features which which uh, which might take a lot of effort but uh, will not create a very high impact and hence put them on the feature backlog to be taken later uh, it's a great tool but it makes us the blind sided on the opportunity part so it needs to be complemented by something else and uh, this is the opportunity landscape uh, uh, framework so here on the x axis we have the features importance to the customers from 1 to 10 on, on the scale of 1 to 10 and on y axis we have uh, the satisfaction with the current alternatives available in the market it could be a competition it could be our own product so the upper uh, left quadrant this is the area of the overserved where the features what they are serving it's not very important to the customer but the satisfaction with the approaches is humongous so basically uh, this particular region is overserved now uh it might be a great opportunity to remove those features uh to help achieve the price advantage if that i mean if that works in the direction whereas uh the bottom right this is the area of the extreme opportunity because the satisfaction with the current alternatives is very less but importance to the customer is huge so uh this could be the sweet spot of creating the delighters uh, as we saw in the kano model so uh but opportunity landscape is not considering the efforts at all uh it is 
it is uh, completely focusing on the uh, satisfaction uh, with the current alternatives and the importance of the customers, basically defining the opportunity where to invest in. Now, if we complement this with the framework that we learned in the previous uh, uh, slide, that was the ROI one, then it would be a uh, that then it would be a, a great uh, great convergence of the two particular aspects of engineering effort and the opportunity, and hence it helps us in prioritizing. So uh, that was uh, those were the the five kind of pitfalls and how to overcome them. Uh, so first one, the customer focus, uh, jobs to be done analysis to unearth the real real gaps in the customer satisfaction and address them, and not going on the two extremes of uh, uh, either completely focusing on the customer or completely. Uh, completely listening to the customers or not listening to the customers at all. Kano model to figure out which features are must-haves, uh, which are performance-oriented and which are the real delighters. And there should be some winners on our side to win the game. So tracking the competition, but only for the uh, must-haves or performance. Delighters should come from our own creativity. Uh, Engineering collaboration, uh, ensure that uh, movement is from problem space to solution space. And uh, in the latter, uh, give a free hand to the engineering function because uh, as uh, Marty Kagan wrote in Inspired, the book Inspired, that uh, engineers can be the source of uh, the maximum creativity if you let them be. Uh, for multi-sided products, try to strike a balance uh, with with uh, all sites by adoption and the retention metrics. So for uh, providers, it should be adoption first. For end customers, it should be retention first. Once, once we have significant traction initially with the launch, then we can work on the scaling part. And the last one, combining ROI and the opportunity landscape to keep track of of uh, both engineering efforts and the uh, potential upside of the product. Now moving next, uh, so I would like to summarize with the, with, the, with the one example on the product market fit. Um, in the lean product playbook, uh, this is suggested as the product market fit pyramid. Um, so it starts uh, from the bottom, the target customer and uh, underserved needs. Uh, this is called the market and from the customer side, the UX feature set and value proposition, which is the product. And to achieve a fit between these two is the most challenging part. Uh, target customers and their uh, uh, underserved needs forming the market and aligning to uh, value proposition, feature set and user experience as part of the product. And it will take a lot of iteration to uh, get the fit. And which is the, which is the real a uh, real uh, challenge for any product manager. Um, just to give you an example uh, the, of call site, uh, I learned about uh, this uh, startup uh, from uh, Professor Sony uh, of Kellogg. This startup developed a live video capture platform uh, with voice and text, allowing one to interact in real time with a remotely located person in any part of the world. So something like Zoom, uh, but in a very continuous fashion. So in the first iteration, uh, so it was a product and now it was searching for a market. So in the first iteration, they tried to target a virtual tourism for customers, but it, it didn't work as customers were not willing to pay for the premium. Virtual tourism means that I want to visit a, a site and because I cannot go it, so I will just try to look at the website uh, look look at that particular uh, place through this uh, platform. Second iteration, they tried to target uh, tourism departments to promote their tourist destination. That didn't work either. And in the third one, they targeted universities for virtual campus visits before making the big call on overseas admissions. That failed. In fourth one, they tried for 
virtual hotel and convention centers for virtual site visits, but the frequency for such meetings was too less to keep this as a viable solution. So four iterations failed. Now, finally, uh, they targeted brand managers for consumer packaged goods for video insights platform for qualitative market research. And guess what? Bingo. <laughs> they got their product market fit. So basically, in any uh, supermarket, put this one, see how, how uh, people are purchasing uh, consumer products, and then draw insights from there. But it took five iterations and number of years to get that product market fit. That's why, uh, as uh, said by uh, a Finnish uh, American software engineer, who is the creator and the main developer of uh, Linux kernel on which the all Android operating system runs, it depends, is almost always the right answer. Because building product is hard. Uh, there are no algorithmic answers and multiple iterations might be required, despite having an ACE team with great experience. So like it, uh, making in a good music, we need to be aware of the context and adopt the balanced path, thinking from frameworks and first principles, but most importantly, as per context. So that brings uh, to the end of my session. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, quick request, uh, take your phone up, uh, open the camera app and scan this QR code. Uh, it will take you to a Google form, uh, share a quick feedback. Uh, it will help me uh, refining these, uh, uh, these slides for further presentations. Um, th these are my emails and LinkedIn coordinates. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any queries, thoughts, or want to uh, connect on building products. Um, Shama, uh, should we have a Q&A session now? Do we have Yes, time for most that? definitely. Yes, we do have uh, uh, 10 more minutes to go. Sure. So let's take the Q&A. Firstly, thank you so much, Ravi, for delivering a brilliant session. Really great and thought-provoking insights. I'm sure the audience agrees with that. So we have a few questions lined up for you in the Q&A window, if you can have a look at it. Uh, well, let's take the first one. Uh, but before that, a quick announcement to the audience. Audience, you can post your questions in the Q&A section or in the comment section of LinkedIn. You can also raise your hand and ask your question live to the speaker. I can unmute you and then you can have a live discussion and get your queries resolved by Ravi. I already see a hand raised. Uh, Ravi, should we take that? Sure. Okay. This is Gaurav Gupta. Gaurav, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, thanks. Hey, hi, Ravi. Uh, thanks for a very uh, insightful session. As a non-product person, I really uh, love those approaches, right? And because I come from a little bit of a data background, I, I kind of believe in making uh, database decisions. And my question is on similar lines. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, because you have such an experience with product, uh, mm -hmm. is there an approach or is there a way uh, by we can... Um, uh, take any decisions based on data let's say uh, that last example which you've taken right mm -hmm. uh, could have could they have implemented some sort of data approach or something with their technology and made a decision based out of some data survey or something mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely a great question uh, uh, there are uh, there are two school of thoughts uh, the, on that one the first one is uh, uh, li living and breathing each and every decision based on data. And the other one is to uh, go more about uh, the intuition. Uh, uh, what I believe is that uh, in case of, uh, if the product is on the B2C space, Gaurav, uh, I think it is, it is easier to do those initial experiments. It could be the primary research, talking to the customer, showing your initial POC version, take the feedback, go back, I mean, refine further. Uh, or if it is a mass scale product, we can do the A-B testing, but there also we need to keep uh, the statistical significance, otherwise uh, otherwise data might be misleading. But yeah, there are, there are chances, more chances in the B2C space. In case of B2B space, 
which was uh, the this this particular product uh, of the call insights uh, uh, i think for the b2b part uh, the selling is more morely the consultative selling at when especially when you are launching a product so for example uh, if i am launching a b2b product uh, and uh, initially i want to have only one or two customers to check the fit and once it is having a universal appeal maybe i can take it to the more customers make it self serviceable platform but in the initial it's a consultative selling so it's very difficult to uh, run through those data sets you need to pick one customer try to sell and as as uh, that particular team try to do in the initial four iterations it didn't work but yeah uh, to to answer a question in the b2c space that uh, the data thing really work well in the b2b it's little hard because the consultative selling is uh, required in the initial phases of the product I hope I answered your question. Ah, uh, yes, partly. So, a uh, follow-up question. So, what, what was so in B two C space? There is there are chances. There is opportunity for data in that uh, in B two B space. Then, what what should be the best approach? Intuition and these uh, models, which you suggest? Yeah, in the B two B space, uh, uh, need to be little uh, uh, patient to get the fit because uh, because the data is not there uh, uh, as a as an option to lean on so will be a little more time taking to get the fit okay so which means that like uh, the proof of concept i mean the idea validation yes. will take a longer period of time comparatively yep okay cool uh, thank thanks. thank you gaurav for asking thanks, the Gaurav. question yes so uh, moving on to the next one this is from uh, aditya vyas what mm -hmm. are preparation that you do before going to a customer interview how not to go with a prejudice how to listen to the feedback yeah yeah good question uh, so this is a very very challenging easier said than done um so uh, so when to when you're going to the customer always take one uh, one more person with you that, that is the initial logistical uh, suggestion because when you are asking the questions you want other person to observe and note down so that uh, that the person who is asking the question take the notes should not get uh, i mean get distracted between these two activities so take the one person along with you uh, and while asking the questions uh, try to focus on the customers problems uh, it's, it's easier said than done because uh, once you are developing a product once you are involved in the product it's it's very easy to get biased so uh, for example if you are asking somebody about uh, their personal uh, i mean their problems what they are trying to solve it's very easy to ask them in the context of your product right so try to avoid that and focus on the questions be prepared keep your questions ready uh, uh, before you go for a customer interview like a list of 20 questions uh, and try to uh, try to be as uh, flexible as possible for example if you talk to you you just took those 20 questions and uh, the customer just uh, just changed the entire uh, conversation by focusing on some other problem which you were not thinking then let the let the customer go in that flow because that would be more insightful rather than sticking to your questions so be prepared uh, before the interview but during the interview try to keep it as uh, more like a conversation with a friend so that would be uh, the answer <laughs> great so this next question is uh, from rajiv mm -hmm. for a product in b2c domain what will be your suggestion to understand that jobs that users want to get done yeah okay, uh, i think uh, some part of uh, the answer covered in the question from uh, uh, gorov as well uh, where we talked about that having running this experimentation and uh, uh, getting the uh, like which is the quantitative way of uh, doing that uh, in terms of uh, understanding what jobs so five wise could be a good framework uh, to get into that thinking mode uh, so if a person is using something then ask why so for example if a person is uh, rather than driving uh, he or she is using a cab service ask why 
why they find it more convenient uh, to have a cab not drive and not not drive a car or something themselves when the answer comes ask again a why uh, because they want to have that uh, social connection uh, because they are driving they, they they want to do multitask while they commute what's the reason and with those frameworks you will figure out that what who is your target customer maybe uh, in case of the example of uh, people who want to uh, not drive and have a cab maybe they are the ones who are looking for multitasking while they commute want to maximize their time it's not about uh, going from destination uh, point a to point b it's more about maximizing the time uh, during that commute that was i mean that's the reason that they are taking cab it's not about convenience or anything else are you getting me so that's how you uh, you you leverage the jobs to get done framework by asking fast for, for, uh, real defining the underneath underneath problem there is a follow up question by rajiv again mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. will balancing both sides framework work in case of a new product or platform mm -hmm. which is into multi sided market any suggestions to consider in such situations got it uh, i think i try to cover that maybe maybe i was not explicit uh, so on the providers providers generally would be uh, uh, i mean when you are launching a product you need less providers and more customer even if you take the example of uh, a ride hailing cabs you need less drivers and more uh, commuters right so providers generally and depending on the size of the market or the kind of the market uh, like uh, like a financial market you need uh, uh, more customers who wants loan and less providers who can disperse those loans right so providers would be less so try to get uh, them adopted because two or three or initially like less number of providers can be uh, so can be good enough for you, for your product to get started while on the end customers part if you focus on the scale at the initial part or the adoption or the user acquisition it might backfire so go for the retention first so try to look at the retention so for example a uh, typical definition of retention if a person is using a feature a if he is coming back again to use the feature a if that is the case means uh, your customers who are actually adopted your product they are liking your product those who have not adopted they are anyways not your target in the uh, at the time of initial launch okay so those who have adopted your product once they are liking it means the product is having that uh, retention ability then uh, and the provider side you have got two or three good providers on the platform then you can uh, get started so that would be the that could be a good strategy going forward as i said there no right or wrong answers and there are no silver bullets or magical wands in this space it's extremely hard job right uh, so this next question is from adarsh tiwari mm -hmm. while defining jtbd how to get jobs which customer is not aware of at all and solving that can become main gate creator for the product and of course in time hmm yeah again uh, a great question uh, so uh, uh, taking an example of uh, of uh, 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 the ford car company where uh, the the famous line from henry ford if i would have cast the customers they would have suggested the faster horses right so so basic uh, uh, the undercurrent theme uh, uh, regarding this uh, the great invention of the mankind of uh, having a having a motored vehicle was that people want to go from uh, point a to point b in a faster way and it doesn't have to be a a horse or any other animal right so again the jobs to be done is to go from point a to point b but if we do not think that way and if we like we think that we don't need to innovate and we need to just upgrade uh, the existing product then it would be uh, get a faster breed of horses right so getting into that mode is again uh, the five wise trying to understand the real problem and then try to address that so for example another one that uh, that i took was uh, regarding this uh, 
uh, uh, the smoke breaks during the lunch hours. It's more about a social connection because you are working in a stressed environment from morning to, to, to lunch, and then you want to take a break, go out with friends uh, to have a quick smoke break at for 10 minutes and come back. So again, the jobs to be done is not uh, uh, having uh, um, any high with the cigarette. It's more about having a connection. So if somebody wants to occupy that space, it could be a, a quick, quick chat service. It could be a, a Instagram, a, could be a Twitter or Facebook. So that's how you figure out that what is the the end customer. It's not very. Uh, it's easier said than done. You need to do a lot of uh, primary research uh, to get that and with that uh, five pies mindset. But yeah, this is the way. Uh, I hope yes, I sir. could answer the question. Yes, uh, audience, please feel free to go ahead and post your comments in the chat section so we know that uh, your queries and questions were answered. Uh, so this next question, I do not know who exactly it's from. It says anonymous. How to choose the customers for your MVP or prototype? Uh, again, um, a brilliant question. Uh, so uh, there are uh, two ways of building product. Uh, first one is you have a product and then you search for the right customer. So generally it happens um, in, case of, uh, in case of if you are really bullish on a technology uh, that, that it will definitely succeed. So you develop a product and then you figure out that where I can find the application of it. Right. So, for example, uh, I would say 5G is into that space right now. That it is extremely faster internet, uh, internet of things. You can connect to multiple devices. You have figured out technology. Now you are trying to figure out what should be the business model. Other way is that you identify a problem and then you figure out how to solve it. So you are uh, open. That that is uh, the preferable for a product manager because you are starting from the customer or you are starting from a. If you remember. Uh, we talked about uh, problem space versus solution space, right? So in, this, in the later category, we are starting with the problem space. So uh, for an MVP or prototype, uh, I would say if you're starting with the, the problem space, then figure out that, uh, that what is the aim. So for example, uh, if, you are, if, you are, uh, uh, if you are trying to solve a problem, which you think could be a, a real, uh, I mean, can have a real viral effect. In that case, you want to have your product validated by the social influencers. So for example, uh, if I'm lost launching a, a pharma product, right, then I would like uh, this to be validated by the healthcare practitioners. It could be an insurance company, it could be a doctor, which can really create, uh, add a lot of value by the adoption. So that could be my initial MVP or uh, uh, MVP or prototype uh, uh, candidates. Or if you see that, uh, uh, that I have a clearly marketed segments, so for example, if I'm launching a product uh, for, a, for a middle-aged uh, uh, single man, right? Then I would like to have uh, the segments from there. And based on the uh, response of the product, if I want to uh, do the forward integration, backward integration, or add more features to my product, more flavor to my product, then I'll go to the uh, I mean other segments. But I need to start with the segment for which I want to test my product first, or I want to have my product uh, test with those customers, which will be the most beneficial for the initial launch and can sustain uh, the launch. That's how uh, I'll decide on the segment part. Well, we have plenty of uh, questions for you, Ravi, but in view of time constraints, we'll ask this one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you suggest some books to explore further on the pointers that you gave in today's session? Sure. Uh, again, uh, product management is a, a very a multidisciplinary field. So I would encourage uh, uh, to, to read from different genres. Uh, could be a book from strategy, could be a book from marketing, uh, could be a, a, book for, uh, a book for the uh, autobiographies of founders, uh, could be on the leadership. So all those uh, books will help somewhere or the other in, in broadening your perspectives and, uh, and getting that into your product development, uh, I mean, product development phase. 
but really need to pick three books on especially and you are time crunched you want to read only three then i would say uh inspired by marty kagan i think uh, that i haven't come across a better book than that in this space it's like a handbook for a product manager uh the second work a book which is more about handling the uh, day to day on prioritization and all those and i have used some of the some of the uh, uh, frameworks of in in this session as well is a book uh, the lean product playbook so these two books i would highly recommend and third one though because of the title it might get uh, uh, featured into only the interview preparation is the cracking pm interview but uh, for all those who want to transition uh from other domains or have already transitioned that book is a is a really like a i mean like a, a com, which gives you the com, the the holistic picture about the domain the cracking pm interview so these three books i would recommend adis i hope you made a note of the books that uh, ravi recommended definitely it'll help you with your uh, future endeavors Uh, but uh, uh, audience in view of the time constraints we'll have to end the q and a here but uh, thank you so much for your uh, participation in the amazing intrigue questions that went on for almost good 15 20 minutes and ravi you answered it brilliantly so uh, thanks. thanks a lot yes. for having me thanks a lot for having me and feel free to reach out if you want to discuss Definitely. anything and again if i can do some sort of uh, uh branding for my company uh, everybody is hiring these days we are no different feel free to reach out uh, uh if you want to get into product management or if you are already into product management and looking for some change feel free to reach out to me absolutely and you can also scan the qr code that that you can see right now on your screen for an exclusive 30 minute session with industry experts of course like ravi and to clear all your doubts on transitioning to a product manager role Now for the final and most exciting part of the session uh, Ravi could you help us pick the champion of curiosity here who asked the best question and we can reward them with the digital learning course uh, I might not uh, be able to recall the um, You can uh, check the questions in the answer section in the Q&A part the ones that we took I'm sure we have taken much more uh, even a few questions online as well so uh, just have a look at them yeah i think uh, the question uh, the 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 first question which was uh, regarding this uh, uh, the data the how to leverage data i think uh, i think that was uh, uh, that was a real real uh, practical uh, practical question that that i have uh, that i have from many of my apms and and uh, product managers that uh, went to use intuition and went to use data i have seen both extreme both sides of extremes So I think. So that, if I'm not wrong, was this the one that we took live? Yes. Yes, I okay. think Gaurav. Gaurav was the one. Gaurav, right? Yeah. Gaurav, congratulations on winning the free digital course. We'll get in touch with you with the reward shortly. Thanks, Shama. Thank uh, Ravi. Thanks, Gaurav. We have enjoyed having you with us, Ravi. It's been a complete pleasure. Please accept this certificate of appreciation. A small gesture from the institute. If you scan the QR code on the certificate, it'll take you to a dedicated Hall of Fame page that we have created for you. That will hold the recording of this session, and we'll also share the recording on YouTube channel. Thank you once again for joining us and sharing your learnings and insights. Thanks all. Thanks all. Thank you, audience, for joining in, joining in and making this session a huge success. Now, before we close, here is a quick reminder on the. expert talk we are hosting tomorrow with bhaskar roy this is can data analytics ai help supercharge your products this you cannot miss this one audience go ahead and register for this event right away you can check the url in the chat box for the same thank you for joining in it was great interacting with you all and uh, with that note i end tonight's session happy learning and stay skilled have a great night